Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mark from Solar Games. How are y'all doing? Uh, today we're going to talk real quick about the serialized rings. Um, I made all my videos. I didn't actually watch any other content creator and uh, I did actually take some time today to go and watch Rudy's video, some other people's video and commentary about this. So I really like that part because it gives me a lot of time to first initially send out my thoughts unfiltered, un unaltered. Uh, by others, and then taking some feedback from, again, the community, you guys all sending me comments, um, t looking at what other content creators are saying and thinking about this, and then forming my new ideas. And this is the part I love about human beings. We can improve on each other's ideas just by simply having that communication. So wonderful. Um, Rudy's video, uh, especially, was a big impact to me because I thought there were couple elements that he said that I basically said in my previous video and I thought it was like yep super on point we both were thinking the same direction um, but as I was watching the video I had a really interesting hot take that I mean it's super devious right but if Watsi does it this way oh man they're gonna it could be one of the best ideas that they've ever had in their life. So the one ring has a big problem and everyone kind of understands this now. If somebody opens it too early, it'll crash the market. Nobody wants to open or buy any more collector's booster. So essentially, naturally, the, the, the boxes are going to crash, right? If people open it too late, well, maybe it's died out and the price of the product will increase. But at the same time, like people are going to yell at Watsi, say, hey, you're scamming us. There's no ring at all, whatever. There's that problem, right? And of course, you have the issue where some Timmy, some kid who doesn't understand what they're opening, opens it and basically stashes away into their closet, not thinking this is anything special, doesn't share with the world. Nobody knows that it's been opened. So effectively, it's like situation number two, except the product actually has been opened, but we just don't know about it. So again, long term, we're going to yell at Watsi and everything. So, which brings me to kind of like my theory about what's going to happen, right? So if you, you, if you put yourself in Watsi's shoes right now, and I, I, I pray to God they don't hire me because, man, the devious ideas I have, it's, it's insane. All right, so imagine you're sitting in Watsi's shoes. What would you do? I mean, this is a bad situation, right? It's like a damn if you do, damn if you don't type of situation, right? It's, um, it's tough. If you have to, first of all, you have to make sure somebody opens this. But if you give it to somebody, you're like, you know, like a content creator, it's 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 scammy, right? Or if Watsi employee open, oh, Mark Rosewater open it. Yeah, you know it's a scam. Like even if he actually did it normally, he can't he can't share it. So again, we're back to the Timmy example. Like imagine if like Blake, because you know Mark, Blake, these guys, they are gonna have products. What if they open it, <laughs> right? They can't share it with the world. Um. There's, so there's some problems there. I think Watsi can solve this problem, right? So we'll, we'll, take, we'll take these scenarios one at a time. If one of the employees or one of the affiliates with Watsi opens this thing, um, the first thing they want to do is, if it's an affiliate, not an employee, they do want to make sure that those creators are filming this on a camera. So that it's like super clear, super clean. And even then you have problems of like, did Watsi intentionally send this box to them? And there's a lot of those kind of things. So essentially, I think if one of these people open it, Watsi, especially employee, Watsi is probably just going to pull the card back, like claw back, print another copy, send it out into the distribution, send it out to the like ethers, right? That's number one. Number two, if a Timmy opens this, like some kid who doesn't understand what's going on and open this, um, well, that's a big if because I'm pretty sure Watsi is not going to do that. So Watsi, you notice on their announcement video, they didn't talk about blister packs. Now, they normally don't talk about blister packs as a product line in their little product sheet because, again, it's not something they consider mainline and it's more for tertiary people to kind of give them a little bit of revenue, but it's not mainline revenue. And so I don't actually think it's going to be in a blister pack. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the risk to them is so big to put that into a blister pack, have like scummy people at Walmart, like, sorry, not scummy people at Walmart, scummy people that shop at Walmart, swap the packs out, do all those crazy stuff, trick the employees because they don't know what they're dealing with, right? Uh, this includes, by the way, Target as well too. It's not just a Walmart thing. So I suspect those packs won't be sold at Walmart or they won't contain the one ring. What about gift bundles? Now, gift bundles are a little trickier. It is, you know, you, you and I, we a lot of my viewers, for example, have purchased it from Amazon. Now you're getting one pack per gift bundle, 
My thinking, honestly, is you, if I was Wasi, I wouldn't put it in the gift bundle either. I definitely make sure that thing, that pack, the golden ticket pack, is inside a collective booster. I would probably have the serialized rings, the other rings, in the gift bundles so that it doesn't look like it's super shady. But that one ring, it should be in the collective booster. And to guarantee that somebody opens it, I would make sure that box makes it to distribution. Now, it doesn't really matter which distributor it goes to. And that's where, as far as I push with respect to, uh, again, me, Watsi today, so wearing the Watsi hat, that's as far as I would push as far as kind of ensuring where I see that pack, right? Make sure it's on a pallet inside a box that's going to a distributor. Doesn't really matter which one, but it cannot be Walmart, cannot be Target, and it cannot be like in a gift bundle or whatever. So sorry to say for the people who bought gift bundles, if you're planning to buy this blister pack, I'm pretty sure you're not gonna get the one ring. And now when I, by that, I mean the one of one, right? The, the serialized one of one, one ring. So what does that mean? The second part is they're gonna make sure that box is in the first wave of the product to the market. If you think about how this works, most of the boxes that get opened are the first wave. Everyone's super excited. Majority of the product will be open on the first wave, right? And especially during pre-release, like most stores back in the old school days, unless you're WPN premium, you wouldn't be able to sell collective boosters. Now. Nowadays, most WPN stores can actually sell collector's boosters, but you have limited quantity, right? And so a lot of people, of course, they're gonna buy a booster box and they're gonna open it. They're not gonna buy a booster box at pre-release pricing to hold, especially not when there is a one ring possibility out there. So, I mean, if you wanna think about how, on the stack of like where you put this thing, you kind of like make sure it's shipped out to a store. It's like one of the first boxes in the box kind of thing, right? There's always a risk that some store, somebody, a collector buys a box, never opens it, puts it on the shelf, and that's the one that has the one ring. There is that possibility. But then you could also kind of work around this too, right? Maybe, maybe Watsi does something very interesting, which is on the inside of the box. Is that risky? That's probably risky, huh? If you put it on the inside of the box, like what if you mark it? You specially mark the box that had the one ring. Maybe on the inside, somewhere outside, you have it. And so as time goes on, then nobody's opened their boxes, you can leak clues that might make somebody want to open their like collective boost box, check these markings and see if they have the one ring box, right? So instead of opening, having to open 12 packs, you know you're guaranteed it because your box has something special on it. Again, not to release this data until, of course, the fact that it has not been opened for many, 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 I don't know, months. There's that. And now, now for the devious one. Honestly, if I was Watsi, <laughs> I wouldn't put the one ring in any packs at all. See, the thing about the chase that's really interesting, like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll use the girlfriend example. Everyone kind of probably can understand this or a boyfriend, right? So we're trying to be, you know, gender neutral on this channel. Um, you're going after some really hot chick or really hot dude, right? What's the most interesting part about the chase? It's the part where you're chasing, right? You're like, oh man, you know, tomorrow I'm gonna send him a text. He's gonna say this, it's gonna be awesome. Oh, I'm gonna bring flowers to, to, to school tomorrow. I'm gonna surprise her at the front door. I'm gonna give her this gift she really likes. Oh, you know, he really likes this like a mechanical pencil. I'm gonna buy it for him and leave it on his desk with a little note, right? That part is the most interesting because you don't know. See, there's a thing we call gambler's premium. Why do we call it a premium is because the possibility of winning, the possibility of getting a yes, the possibility of opening the box and finding the cat alive is much more interesting than the cat being alive or dead. You, a lot of people, you know, the way that our human minds are wired, we don't really want to know. I mean, we want to know, but we want to, we want to want to know forever. Like you always want to seek because if you have the answer, you have, you have all the girls you want. Like, when do you get bored? You get bored when you get the girl, get the guy, and you kind of spend a lot of time together. Now, like, your human brain's, like, looking elsewhere. Oh, what, about, what about that other hot chick? You know, you're, like, chasing the next booster pack, right? That's what I'm telling you. Like, the way you do this, if you're super smart, is you talk, talk this one ring up. You keep, you know, oh, it, it, and all the strategies I put before, don't put in blister packs. Don't put in gift bundle. Definitely do that. But obviously, if you're not putting it anywhere, you're not, it's not going to exist anywhere. But remember the marking stuff? Oh, like we, we actually marked one, 
10% of the boxes. So the 10% of the boxes that definitely could have the ring has this marking, right? Instead of saying the one box is gonna have this mark. Oh, uh, if you look at the UPC code on the boxes, the 10% that has the ring will have this UPC code. Because even if a lot of people open that UPC code or whatever, and they didn't find the one ring, you could still say, well, it was 10%. It's not, I'm not saying guaranteed in that box is that one ring. Now, there will be suspicions that, oh, you didn't put it in the box. Yeah, you didn't put it in the box. But they're gonna say that anyways. Like, think about the risk you're taking here. If you don't, if you put it in the box, nobody finds it, it's the same thing. So if it's gonna be the same outcome, why not fuel the chase? Look, Watsi's goal is to sell more boxes. You can't sell more boxes once you find the lottery ticket. Yes, there are other rings to find, but this is the one ring, guys. Once the one ring is found, the value of every single booster box decreases. Now, imagine we never find the one ring box and Watsi has some sort of like high level number of like, well, we printed 300,000 boxes, but really you secretly printed, let's say 500,000 and you slowly trickle them out. Again, strategy, if you look at my other video about changes in Watsi's strategy, you trickle the product out slowly, you keep the chase alive, and then at the end, if you really want just to have the thing out there, you seed a box out there. Seed it to a small channel like mine, okay? I open this shit on camera, 2,000 subs, nobody cares. Who's this Mark guy, right? He opens it, lucky guy, cool, done. You sold 500,000 collector's boosters, way more than what you normally print. Make a lot of money. Looks like you made the promise happen. That's what I would do. Obviously, if I'm running Watsi, I can't give the card to myself, right? But if, but if I was at Watsi, that's what I would do. If I can like, let, the, the, let this thing like go on for a long, long, long time. Your second, third print run of the collector's booster, you seed that one ring in there. But you try to make sure that that one ring doesn't just go to normal distribution to be basically bought by collectors who take cases of this stuff and puts it on a shelf. You should see my garage. But make sure it gets in the hand of a small creator, not a big one. So you can't give it to like a big, like Tolarian opening this, way too shady, right? Give it to like, I don't know, like to some small creator out there. CD out there. They're gonna, they're gonna make a big deal out of it and everyone's gonna see it because you have to put, give it to the creator so they can share it with the world, but not someone big enough where it's like, oh, that's obviously a problem. Let's see if I'm right, dude. So first of all, if, we, if this thing gets open really quickly, then I'm definitely wrong. And that's part of the, the, my first theory. You seed it early, you get it out in the you know, field. But if this thing doesn't get found for months and then suddenly some small creator gets, finds it, I'm telling you, dude, that's the, that's the 300 IQ way to solve this problem. Mark Solar Games, good luck. Stay classy.